Once upon a time, a legend says that there was a man named Narcissus. And Narcissus was an interesting fellow. He did a few key things in his life. He first rejected love. Flat out rejected it, said, nope, goodbye, don't want you. Adios, sayonara, hasta luego, baby. I don't even know if that means goodbye. But regardless, he said all of those things to love and he rejected it flat out. Or I should say he rejected it in almost every sense when it came to almost every person, except one person. He fell in love with himself. Ooh la la, he saw himself in the mirror and he saw that reflection and he said, baby, it's cold outside, won't you stay inside with me? And the rest is history. He fell so in love with himself that when he bound out of the house and when he found a spring of water, because back in those days they didn't actually have mirrors, so I'm being historically accurate when I said he looked himself in the mirror at home. But now he's at the spring. He's looking at himself in the waters of the spring and he is just in love, infatuated with this image of himself. And because he was so infatuated with himself and so uninfatuated with literally everyone else, he decided to do something that was beneficial to him and him alone. He decided to run away, away from completely everyone else, and then he died because he could not sustain himself without the help of anyone else in the world. And if I may remind you, this man, this legend, his name is Narcissus. And this is the root word. This man's name is the root word of narcissism. So let me ask you, are you like Narcissus? Do you have a little too much narcissism? Do you love yourself? Which is good, but do you love yourself a little too much? Let's ask that question in today's episode of Love Stories with Grady. Hola, my name is Grady Wysorek, and since you asked, I'm a 22-year-old boy who has never been in a relationship longer than 22 hours. And in today's episode of Love Stories with Grady, we are actually starting a short mini-series, a five-part mini-series, or technically there's four more installments that are after this one, about the ladders of love. So what in the world is the ladders of love? And that's a fantastic question that I'm about to tell you right now. As all Love Stories with Grady episodes are inspired by, we got this Facts of Life and Love book here that I am basing each of these episodes off of. And in chapter 10 of Facts of Life and Love for Teenagers, what this book talks about is something interesting. It says there's pretty much five levels of love and these levels are like rungs on a ladder. And we continually through our life move up these rungs on the ladder as we begin to develop more and more and more. So in each of these episodes, I'm gonna be breaking down what these love elements are. Now what this book talks about is that each level of love is important, but if we stop moving up the ladder of love, it might cause some problems. So I wanna spend five episodes talking about these five rungs on this five-fold ladder in order to figure out, all right, do you have all of these elements somewhat in your life? Now, I'm not talking as if I've got everything figured out in my life. I have plenty that I need to figure out on my own. However, interestingly enough, too much of self-love is something that I battle against, but maybe not in the way that you would think. So I'm gonna get into that at the very end of this video. Here's why self-love is important. In the very beginning stages of being a baby, think about it. Like literally all you're doing is self-love. You are loving yourself, you're wailing if you don't get your way, if you don't get fed, if you don't get sleep, you're just wailing like you're a tornado siren, all right? And why is this your automatic response? It's because your wailing is your way of communication. Your wailing, your weeping, your crying is the way that you survive. So self-love is very important. However, here's what I want you to picture. Let's say someone stops at this level of love. They never move up the rung ladder of developing their love for other people and other things. Can you imagine whether you're 16, 18, 20, 22, 37 and a half. Can you imagine at any point in your life, all of a sudden wailing when you're not able to get Wendy's for lunch? Can you imagine yourself sucking your thumb to comfort yourself? Can you imagine doing literally all the things that babies do in order to feel loved by themselves? Can you imagine causing severe tantrums, literally toppling over aisles of mayo in the grocery store or rows of books in the library because maybe the grocery store didn't have your type of relish or because the library 
had a copy of the book that you wanted, but it was dog-eared and you didn't want a dog-eared version of a library book. Here's my point in the shorter video. Self-love is important, but if it's the only thing that rules our lives, it gets to the point where it's unhealthy. So my question before I talk about me personally to you is where in your life are you being kind of selfish in regards to how much you love yourself? Is there a point in your life, in any area of your life, where you should be putting other people's preferences and being a little bit more selfless in front of your own personal preferences. Now, not all people believe in having selfless love for others, which is fine. You don't necessarily need to believe in that. But my question to you is, what kind of life did Narcissus have when he ran off, ran away from everyone, and was on his own? A life that likely wasn't as fruitful as he would have had if he would have gotten over his deep love of himself and potentially opened himself up to a little bit of love at least for others. Now for me, one of the ways that I have a little bit too much self-love and maybe calling it self-love is weird. I think self-love is good, but it gets to the point where self-love becomes selfishness. And so selfishness is the problem. Self-love isn't really the problem. If you're loving yourself so much where you start hurting and neglecting and damaging relationships and the lives of other people, that's when it becomes dangerous. So anyway, I'm a writer and I write different projects and different stories. And whenever I'm working on a big project, usually a book or sometimes, a back to back to back to back to back journal entries that I'm trying to catch up on. Sometimes I get in the zone of here's a wall here, here's a wall here, here's a wall here, here's a wall right behind me and no one else can bother me. If you come up to me, get away from me, you freaking freak. I don't want to see your face, I don't want to hear your voice, I don't even want to know of your existence at this point in time. Okay, first of all, I'm slightly over exaggerating, so give me some leeway in that. But that's kind of how it feels I am in those moments when someone, if I'm in a public place, comes up to me in the middle of my writing. I look up at them like, are you freaking kidding me? Are you really ruining my existence with your existence right now? Or when I lived at home, sometimes my family would simply do something innocent like ask me, what do you want for dinner, Grady? And I gave them the rudest attitude in the world because I'm in the zone and they should know I'm in the zone. And yes, I have been in the zone for three and a half hours, but shouldn't they know that I need at least seven and a half hours to complete my project? I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm pushing after my passion, I'm pushing after my to-do list. But in the meantime, I'm somewhat pushing away the people that mean the most to me in life. And that's not healthy. And in my opinion, that's not right. That's loving my situation, loving what I'm doing so much to the point where I'm hurting other people. And something that I think about is, all right, when I'm in a relationship someday, how am I going to let this trait of mine that I've had in the past not affect my relationships with my wife, with the person I date, with my family, all of these things. How am I gonna make sure that it doesn't negatively affect those people? Because what's more important to me? Having this negative trait of shutting people out when they're in the same room with me as if they don't matter, is that more important to me? Or is having a loving relationship with this person more important to me? Some people would honestly say this is really important and I would agree that it's important. I would agree that this eventually will be paying the bills for me and so it's like a job and sometimes at your job you can't have those completely unboundaried conversations and talks with the person on the other end over here. However, if you know you can't communicate for seven hours, you need to at least communicate with other people that you can't communicate for seven hours. You need to distance yourself physically so you're not hurting people when they are coming up to you and needing something from you. There's a time and a place for self-love where it's healthy and purposeful. The whole point of this is start thinking, start considering how your actions, how your self-love might be negatively hurting other people who genuinely care about you, who genuinely want the best for you, but also want you to have the best for them. Life is built on relationships. It's built on communication. It's built on love. And there's so many different layers and aspects of love. And if you stop on the lowest rung of this ladder of love, you aren't going to be able to experience the greatness that life has in store for you. Anyway, that's all I have to say in this video. I appreciate you stepping up onto this first rung of the ladder with me and there's four more rungs to go so you'll be experiencing some of those rungs in the upcoming videos now 
before you leave. And I almost hit the camera with this and that would have not been good. However, it would have been interesting. I have a question for you. What is one way that you think you love yourself a little too much in life? That's my question to you to put in the comments below. And what is one small way that you think you can improve in this area to get a little bit better? All right, if you're having a good day, subscribe below. And if you're having a subpar day, well, you need to subscribe even more down below. All right, I'm gonna see you in the next video. And I just want you to know that you are loved. Maybe by me, maybe by someone else. You're a very special person, but be sure to see the specialness in other people too. All right, adios.